If you think the events that happened this week in America, the worst hurricane we've had ever since Katrina, if not even worse than that, the Iran and Israel situation that's going on right now where Israel is just about to bomb Iran's nuclear facilities and go after their oil now that Hezbollah has been successfully weakened. Russia has changed their nuclear doctrine to include the US into the Ukraine war if those long range missiles are used. Poison is being released into the air. Safe to say it's been a chaotic week, but if you think what we've been through recently is something, you've got to understand this is actually only just the birth pangs. Those things I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, it's actually part of what the Bible prophesied in Ezekiel chapter 28 and verse 25. And the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me today and gave me a vision that I want to be sharing with you here later on this video. And of course, this isn't a vision of, of eating brownies in heaven. This is a vision straight from the Bible, okay? <laughs> I just need to keep things straight and clear for you because we need to have things simple right now in a world filled with confusion. And I want to tell you, if you think technology and all of these shortages going on with these cellular companies has been something so far, just wait until what's about to come. Just wait until, if you think the airlines have been chaotic, just wait until what's about to come because things are only escalating. And again, it's only the beginning. AT&T, now Verizon went out earlier this week where more than 3 million people separate of the hurricane, okay, these were in different areas, didn't have service, completely lost out. Um, not only that, but we're finding everyone's social security numbers have been hacked, which by the way, I encourage you to freeze your credit so that uh, your credit line can't be accessed during these times. And look over your finances right now. Look over where you're investing. You need to diversify and you need to stay on God's side. And I'll be getting into that later here on. But before I keep going, I just want to share this scripture in Ezekiel chapter 28, because if you're wondering what's going on in Israel right now, it is correlating and lining us up to be perfectly aligned in end times prophecy more than ever before. It says this, this is what the Lord says, the people of Israel in verse 25 will again live in their own land, the land I gave my servant Jacob, for I will gather them from the distant lands where I have scattered them. So obviously that has already come to pass. That came to pass in, in the 1940s when the country of Israel was founded again after 2000 years, after they'd been scattered abroad, they were brought back together. But I want you to see what is in this verse before that in starting verse 23, it says the attack will come from every direction and and then everyone will know that I'm the Lord. No longer will Israel's scornful neighbors prick and tear at her briars and thorns, for then they will know that I am the sovereign Lord. So there's this principle that keeps being established where God mentions Israel, and then he says, then everyone will know I'm the Lord. And listen, it is completely understandable that a lot of security officers and presidents and quote unquote um, main people of the government of Israel have made some mistakes and have done some shady things. And incidents like October 7 really should have never happened had they been prepared and had they been listening to even their own intelligence, okay? So this is not a complete defense of the political state, you could say, of Israel. But it is clear that the Bible has laid out the obvious principle that at the end of the day, when God gives covenant to his people and give, gives covenant to his land, he doesn't throw that in the trash can. Jesus didn't come to do away with Israel. He actually came to fulfill Israel. He actually came to fulfill the covenant that God gave to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And at the end of the day, if anyone deserves that land, it's the ones who have been there since the start. It's the ones who actually have values of freedom for all. It's the ones that don't want to behead anyone who disagrees with them, right? <laughs> Last time I checked, like we want to act as if, oh yeah, well, well, the Israelis, they should just leave and and then everything will be more peaceful. Oh, so that the, the jihadists can take over the land and and rule over millions and continue their Islamic jihad and, and, and wicked, sick doctrine upon everyone around them? Is that really something you want to support? And of course you say, well, it'll be more peaceful. Really? And that's a whole nother story. You're that's that's always that's giving in to the threats of the the terrorists. I mean, that just doesn't make any sense. But how does this all line up with end times biblical prophecy? And, and what is about to come in America that we need to be prepared for? Obviously, we're 30 days. You're probably watching this. It's less than 30 days until the election. I'm here to tell you, though, what is, hap what is going to happen on November 4th or 5th, whatever day it is, is not just going to be an election. And we're not just going to be voting for a president. Because at the end of the day, whoever wins this upcoming election, we have an opportunity where 
both presidents are going to face intense circumstances. However, one will be able to bring us into, a, you could say, a softer landing or a, a more peaceable place than the other. However, they're both going to go through intense terminal. And if I'm being honest with you, neither one of them is our savior here. Neither one of them is the one we're praying to. Now, granted, there is one that is more biblical. There is one that actually stands to protect women from men entering their locker rooms. There is one that actually protects little kids from having transitioned genders and being mutilated. There is one who actually um, is, is more pro-life than the other candidate. And that's obvious. And if you cannot see that, if you, if you genuinely either don't vote or vote for the candidate that is promoting the murder of kids, you do not want that blood on your hands. People say, don't make it biblical and political. It's clear that when we love Jesus, he's the Lord of our life. And so all of these things are coming together. What's going on with Israel? attacking Iran right now, right? Why are they going to bomb their nuclear facilities? Well, it's obvious Israel, Israel has ha been having to defend itself against Iran's proxies now for years. And Iran has been raking in this money from the oil and then funding Hezbollah and Hamas and these terrorist groups, even in Syria and the South, Saudi Arabia and Yemen. I mean, there's just all these different variables where Iran has been funneling this money and Israel's finally just had enough. Israel is saying, we're going to get this done and we're actually going to defend ourselves. That being said, there are some variables that really could play out here as soon as they bomb the nuclear facilities that everyone needs to be aware of. But I want to tell you, I saw this vision that the Lord allowed me to see of a tree. And I'm now speaking about you. I'm now speaking about the everyday person. Listen, I don't, I don't need to talk to the economic professionals. I don't need to talk to the elite. I don't need to talk to the Forbes top 100. I just want to talk to the everyday person right now. I just want to talk to the father, the grandfather sitting at home, wondering what to do with his life, finding out that he has no hope anymore. He's been praying and praying and praying and, and he just wants to have hope for the country again. I want to talk to that 15 year old that doesn't know what they're doing with their life. And you feel like you go to school and it's, it, it isn't what you expected and it's not what you want to do. And then you go to a, a hobby, but you don't really enjoy that. And you just feel like you're running into a brick wall. I want to talk to that person that continues feeling like you're tired and you've done everything right. You've changed your diet. You've slept differently, but you still just feel tired all the time. I want to talk to that person right now. I want you to hear these words. I saw a tree and in the roots of the tree, the very foundation of the tree, there was deep wounds. There was these deep cuts. There was these deep, you could say, spears that were in the roots of this tree. And while the tree was supposed to stand strong, the tree was supposed to be able to weather the storms and the hurricanes and the tornadoes, and it was supposed to stay firm, rooted in the truth. But instead of being rooted in something that was firm, it was being carried away because it was so wounded down in its roots. And I want to speak to you right now that are watching this video. I want to encourage you for every person that has gone through the spirit of rejection and confusion and pain and resentment. Father God loves you. And right now, I saw him actually pouring out a jar of honey, a jar of healing honey, honey that as soon as it hit the roots, there was a great healing that flowed all throughout the entire tree and all throughout the foundation and the same roots that in the past were just being carried away and and they were so cut up and bruised and thrown out those same roots became so strong again in fact they became what what they were originally created for which was to be unshakable and unmoved i hate to break it to you you didn't sign up for a safe space coffee shop when you said yes to christ if he really is Lord of your life, it's time that you go all in and just receive his grace today. Receive his word today. And as serious as you are about doing all of the research on the news and the topics of the prophecies and watching the next YouTube video, I actually would challenge you to enter your closet door and go into his arms today. The Bible says clearly, enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. And then it actually says in Hebrews, that we can boldly come into the throne of grace where we may find mercy in our time of need. There's going to be great times of need. The electrical grid, I've talked to many technicians and even recently now I've talked to many cellular providers. I've talked to a lot of 
just different people in the different spheres. And they're all telling me the same thing, that it is as vulnerable as it's ever been. And not just in the federal level, even in the local level, the cybersecurity of a lot of these companies that control the vast majority of everyone's phones, internet, electronics, all of our resources, air, airplanes, transportation, it is, it is all like a stack of cards that if one person, one thing can get it, can, can get right in there, things can collapse quicker than you realize. If you don't believe me, just look at the strike that happened across the ports that now is resolved, but it was only a strike for three days. And it was like all of America's companies were losing their minds over it. That is just a sign. That is just a, a knock on the door of the monster that that is anticipating to come. But I'm not telling you this to get you afraid. Please hear me right now. Like you don't need to go cry and worry and let yourself be filled with stress. Instead, you can rejoice because you know what is to come. The Holy Spirit lives inside of you. I can't tell you everything that's going to come, but he can. And he'll show you exactly where you need to be, who you need to be running with, the word that you've got to be receiving. You know, I was reading the word today in John 17, where Jesus literally said, Father, I thank you. You love them as much as you love me. You are for them as much as you are for me. It's why Jesus said the same works that I do, greater works are you going to do? You know, me and my wife were walking into the, ho into the hotel today and it was just awesome because we were talking to the hotel check-in person and she was checking us into our room. And of course, most of us just want to get to our room. We just want to rush past the moment and we just want to focus on our own priorities, right? And that's what we were doing. We were rushing to the elevator and I'm actually so thankful. My wife stopped me. She said, Gabe, don't you want to pray for her? And I said, you're right. I was like, why didn't I offer to pray for her? Sure enough, she had been going through um, some, some different things with pain in her leg and Anyways, we prayed and sure enough, Jesus healed her right then and there. She moved her knee around and all the pain was gone and she, she'd she been having swelling there and, and the Lord healed her. It was awesome. It was miraculous. And and then she started telling us about her songs and we just talked to her. And, and it's like, you don't realize that your conversation with someone could actually be the thing that saves them, could actually be the thing that just gives them hope. And they could be going through the toughest of times. They could just need one word of encouragement and we could walk right past them. But it's really important not just to walk, not just to, to shine bright in front of others, but to seek Jesus in the secret place. Because if we will seek Jesus in the secret place, everything else will just be an overflow of that which we've already filled up. The reason I say that neither of these candidates are going to be our solution is because they're not going to be our Savior. Only Christ can be our source. Only Christ can be the one in whom we trust right now. And with less than 30 days now coming up with the election, we've got the Israel-Iran situation. We've got the Russia-Ukraine situation. We've got the China-Taiwan. We've got all of these immigrants coming in from who knows where. And it feels just like such turmoil. But I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying, peace, be still peace, be still, because we have nothing to fear. And as large of a storm as the enemy wants to throw at us, as much worry and stress that he wants to put on our shoulders, we're just going to stay in that place where we say, God, I cast all my cares on you, for I know you care for me. You've taken me out this much. You've provided for me this far. You won't fail me now. <laughs> It's that joy that will rise up within your soul. And you're not just going to go watch a million doom and gloom prophecies, but instead you're going to open up the Bible on your own and you're going to stare into the eyes of Christ and actually find yourself in his eyes. Find yourself as the one in whom he's always been believing in, as the one in whom he's never doubted, never rejected. So right now, Father God, I pray for the person watching this video. Holy Spirit, I pray you would fill them with fire and reveal to them what is to come in their life, who they should be running with, the, the circle that they should be around. God, I pray you'd reveal what you're calling them to sacrifice. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to talk just for a moment about your budget and your finances. There's a, there's a reason the Bible says in, in Hebrews 7, here mortal men receive tithes. But in heaven, God receives the offering. Or, or, the purpose of tithing is not so that God gets 
some of your money, okay? God, God's going to do okay. He doesn't need your, your money. Instead, actually, the purpose of tithing is that you are placing God as the source of your life. And you're actually saying, God, I trust you more than I trust myself. You're giving him a margin to work with. And you're actually testing him. And it's the only thing that God actually asked us to test of him. People are like, oh, tithing isn't in the New Testament. Well, I just read you a scripture straight from the New Testament. Even Jesus talked about tithing. But here's the thing about tithing. It's not just about checking a box or saying that you're a tither. It's about doing it out of your own heart because you want to seek first his kingdom. And just like we pay taxes first, just like we provide for ourselves first, right? And we have all of these things that, that we prioritize. The tithe is God asking us, will you seek me first? Let me tell you, he's promised us that if we will seek him first in our finances, he will bless us in every other area. And I can tell you of personal testimony ever since I learned about tithing. Of course, it wasn't comfortable. Of course, it wasn't convenient. It'll never be convenient because it'll never make logical sense to give 10% of your finances away. That I mean, that just doesn't make sense. But what if I actually told you God's not trying to get something from you? He's actually trying to bless you because he could do more with your 90% than you could ever do with 100%. And if you don't believe me, just just look at the Bible yourself and how to sow and how to give. And I'm not telling you this message to manipulate you into giving to, to our ministry and to this channel. Although I will say, if the Lord puts this message on your heart, and if you are seeking somewhere to be a part and somewhere to, to run with, you are more than welcome to help us get this message of the gospel out there to the entire world. And, and, and absolutely, we would, we would welcome your, your tithe. But I just encourage you, find where God has called you and find where you can believe in something enough so that you can give your tithe to that cause. And, and maybe it's not perfect. I'll be first to say, you know, this is not a perfect channel. I'm not going to have a million videos on the a million different topics that you need to know, but I will <laughs> do what the Lord has called me to do. And we are seeing lives changed. We're traveling full time. We're preaching the gospel at no charge to everywhere we go. And you can be a part of that. You can know that your donation is actually helping us. We set it up as a nonprofit ministry where we're giving away devotionals almost everywhere we go. We're charging nothing and we're continuing to produce content. And we want to produce better content. We need editors. We need a prayer center. We need a lot of different a studio that doesn't have mold in it. I mean, we're facing a lot, but it's because of support from people like yourself that helps us continue getting the word out there. And you can rest assured, you give God 10%, watch out because the 90% will will be so much uh, more protected, protected than you can realize. And so my best encouragement for what is to come, for the intensity that's to come, is <laughs> seek God first with your finances. Ask him where he wants the resources to go. Ask him if he wants you to be a, become a partner of this channel. I would invite and welcome you. And, and I'll tell you, <laughs> God is not a man that he should lie. And, and he's not going to get caught owing any man anything. He's always faithful. So if, if you have that on your heart, that you want to tithe and you want to become a part of God's blessing, he's actually trying to get something to you. He's trying to bless you. And so I welcome you. And that link is down in the description below if you'd like to become a, a partner with this ministry. And Maybe you're watching this, you're a 14-year-old and you have $1 to tithe. Listen, it's not about the amount. It's about the heart. That $1 is just as meaningful as anyone's gift of any amount. It's all about the heart. And maybe you don't even have money. I'm asking you to tithe your time with us. Would you pray with us?